You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey, hey guys, welcome, welcome back to the Side Hustle Pro Podcast. It's Nikayla here. And today in the guest chair, we have an award-winning on-air talent, entertainment journalist, content creator, and podcaster, Gia Peppers. Now, Gia is best known for her appearances on NBC's Today Show, her nationally syndicated Urban One radio show and podcast, More Than That with Gia Peppers, and as one-fifth of the wildly popular podcast, Black Girl Pod. Recently, the Washington, D.C. native also launched an original interview series on her YouTube and IGTV channels titled Give You the Game, where she leads inspirational conversations with impactful leaders like Debbie Allen, Erica Campbell, Sarah Jakes Roberts, and more. And in each of them, she intends to give viewers game-changing details of how these people inspire us and pursue and attain their grandest dreams. And what I love about Gia is she is really hoping to help people understand that there is greatness in all of us, not just the people who we view as great, but the greatness is in us as well. I really hope that this conversation resonates with you. I love that we touched on the path of a creative who may have done some traditional parts of the whole media route of, you know, paying your dues in media and entertainment journalism, but is also absolutely forging her own path and is redefining what it means to be a freelancer and a side hustler in today's climate. So let's get right into it. All right, Gia. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Side Hustle Pro guest chair. Finally, so good to have you. (laughs) I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Nikayla, for having me. I'm ready to get into this talk, honey. All right, (laughs) let's get into it. So first of all, all right, what are you working on now? Because I know you are a multi-hyphenate. You always have many things going on all at once. So if you were to sum up all of your projects, everything you're doing right now, what, what would you say? I would say that the most, the biggest thing that we are working on right now is more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, this We are in season two and we are almost wrapped production for season two, but we nice. have new episodes still dropping for the next three, four weeks. So definitely tune into that. We've had incredible conversations with, with incredibly talented human beings who are experts at making sure that we are living life more well, especially as black people. Yes. And it's my favorite thing to like contis- consistently be able to learn about and talk about uh, because there are a lot of ways that people have approached wellness that are new to just black folk, right? right. Like I was interviewing Dominique Drake Ford and she is just this incredibly brilliant and deeply knowledgeable uh, educator in the spaces of sustainability and fashion, but she also ties it back to our ancestors and how all of the things that we traditionally do are technically practicing sustainability and how when she would go into sustainable spaces yeah. that that uh, were about celebrating sustainability, it was all white people. Ah. And she really was able to just bring it back home that like, our grandmothers reusing fabrics and making Sunday dresses, sustainability. Okay. Our great great grandmothers uh, lear- using all parts of food to make meals for weeks because they only had certain certain aspects of food given to them from slave owners. Sustainability. Like, We've, been sustainability. We've been doing sustainability. We've this. been doing it, and so that those are some of my favorite conversations. And of course, we talk about you know other issues like climate change and how that is affecting. Black people in Black populated cities, even though they're being gentrified, they're still the first to be affected by the trickle down effect of right. how climate change is harming the environment. That is because, amazing. You know, we had this uh, expert named Gringo Leah on episode one who was able to, she's a real scientist. And she was just like, if you look at the stats, densely populated areas that have Black people mostly are ne- closer to factories. Clo- like it's just a lot the water is messed up like in flint like yeah. so it's just it, it's it, i learned it's so much so meaningful i definitely work and meaningful conversations yeah. that you're having yes and, and then we have fun conversations yeah. too like about how to keep date night a uh, spicy with black love like we have uh, the, the next episode coming up is featuring mr and mrs kev on stage oh, I love and they that. talk about love their that. their <laughs> love story yes and All like right. how they've known each other since they were 15 and they married for almost 20 years wow. and how they keep 
a relationship that is a friendship that is growing, that is giving them space to evolve and become more successful. Because 10 years ago, they were talking about how, you know, Kev on stage was just starting yeah. and now he's everywhere I and has his own how, studio. I love seeing their empire. I love seeing what they're doing. So I can't wait to and tune so into that, that one. Connection. Yes. And my parents are actually on that episode too. Oh, okay. um, I love and they've that. been married for 33 years, 32, 33, almost 33 years in September, 32 years. Clap it up, clap it so, up for them. Yes. All and right. so one of their, their first date stories also hilarious. So I love they had to be all on of it. these conversations. And I love, you know, the mixture and, and all the different, you know, nuggets that you can get from your show. And speaking yes. of your parents, so let's go back for a little bit. I understand that your dad was one of the people who inspired you to get into journalism. Can you speak a little yeah. bit about what, you know, what led you to be bitten by that journalism bug and you know how did you go from there absolutely so my dad is a longtime hard news journalist um who had been he was obsessed with history in college and he studied history in college but wanted to make sure that he was using my dad has such a great voice like this deep like mm-mm voice. <laughs> and so he used his voice um and was a, a anchor he's from mm-hmm. rhode island so he was an anchor for a while there and then moved on to dc when he got laid off in the journal journalism you get laid off. It's one of those things, right, that happens. And it usually leads you to the things that are for you. And so my dad moves to D.C., finds a job at NPR and was there for 23 years. And during that time, he met my mom and then they got married and had me. And in my first two months of life, he took me to the newsroom and told everyone at NPR that I would be a broadcast journalist. Oh, okay. And we we were we were coming back home and my dad was the guy that used to carry the big camera on his shoulders to like talk to every, you know, he was that guy like in the nineties. Yes. With everything was filmed like this. (laughs) And so he, um, were, was filming and talking to my mommy and telling her about my day. And he was like, yeah, Gia went into the newsroom today and told everybody she'd be a broadcast journalist. And we ended up finding that video. I ended up finding that video. I was just about to ask, do you yes. have that video? Oh. It's on my page. It's on my Twitter. It's the pinned tweet footage. on my Twitter. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's, it's on my Instagram. It's on my IGTV because it's my favorite thing about this story, like it's just yeah. so much evidence that God has a bigger plan for us that is already in motion, even before we even understand, like before we are thoughts, before mm-hmm. we can think. Right. God before has a plan, we were right? In the womb. Yep. Hello. Because yep. it be taking it to the word. Right. And right. <laughs> and I think you know that is just evidence. And I actually mm-hmm. found the video when I was cleaning out my phone. I've seen the video several times in my life because we're that family. We do watch home videos every now and then, <laughs> and just watch how cute we were as kids and how cute my parents were when they were really, really young. They still cute. But when they were young and just falling in love and figuring out life. And so, um, but I did find it. It was right before, like right around my 30th birthday, right after my 30th birthday. And I was in one of those like dark spaces who wasn't in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. But I was in one of those spaces where I was just like so uncertain. I was feeling like why am I even doing this? Things just aren't happening in the way that I want it to (laughs) I want it to. Things just aren't happening as I see fit. And I was cleaning out my phone because, you know, child storage. And I come across the video and I look at it and I was just being watching it, being happy. And I was like, Lord, you know, whatever. And I look at the date and it was literally the day before uh, 30 years after we filmed that video. Like the film, it was built filmed on like 11, 20, 1990. And I had seen it on 11, 19, 2020. And I was like, okay, Lord. I like, when I tell you I broke down and I was like, I'm so sorry for trying to give up on this dream and this Mm. vision that you placed in my heart. That gave me chills. Like make me cry. Like just imagining that moment. Like, because I was so like, Nikayla, I, 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 I'm such a Virgo and I, I overthink everything. And if, and if after a while I start seeing that, like mm-hmm. the plans that I, that I have overthought are not falling into place, I start to be like, okay, well, where's the pivot? And yep. after you put in 10,000 hours into something, you, it does break your heart if you have to pivot and it, and it looks totally different. Sometimes you, you do come to that point, but I wasn't there. And God really showed me like, yo, stop. Yeah. Look around. I, I gave you this vision. Mm -hmm. I gave you this plan. This vision that you think was, was literally in my hands for you when you were two months old. 
and before. Yep. But I gave it to your dad to tell you, right? And so I say all that to say, freefold part of the story. So that's the first part of the story. But then I grew up singing, dancing, and acting. I was the girl that was always reading J14 magazines. I was going to be the... <laughs> I was, I was, one of my goals at 14 was to be like Lil Romeo's love interest in a video. Oh, wow. Like I, I was so you that had girl. entertainment dreams. Honey, I was trying to be <laughs> on tour with Bow Wow and then I was what? ready. Like yes. what? I used to practice all the time. I had my little brush. I was ready. And my mother is a dentist and she doesn't. She's like, she's Cheryl Lee Ralph. I tell the story <laughs> so much. She's Cheryl Lee Ralph and Six to Act 2. You ain't going to be on that corner saying your shirt to the waters. You got to put the... <laughs> the choir is out. <laughs> like that was her. And so it wasn't like she was being a mom, right? She mm-hmm. wasn't trying to necessarily like discourage me. She's she just was like, if you're gonna do that, you can't just do that. Like, I'm not paying for you to go to school just to be singing. You could sing on the side, but this ain't yeah. that. Okay. And so I had to get a degree in something and I was naturally good at storytelling. And so in college and in, and in high school, like I would do the morning news. Okay. I would, we used to have a morning news thing. I would write for um, various like magazines that our school would have. I didn't do the newspaper because I was also a cheerleader and a dancer and a musical theater. So they <laughs> asked for too much. I couldn't do all that. I, I had to be cute as well. Right. The I had to keep up the vocal. Intense. Yep, yep. Hello? I was like, you want me to come in <laughs> four days a week? Girl. We're not getting paid for this. Like, right. but I wasn't that girl. So I um I wanted to balance it. And so when I went, got to college, I decided to major in broadcast journalism mm-hmm. and theater arts. So I could have both. And in theater and acting and singing is something that I'm definitely getting back into. So, you know, y'all will see. I don't believe in boxes Love for anybody. I, do I don't believe, believe in boxes. boxes. No. So like and you know, it's funny you say that because when I saw Sunny on power book or whatever the Hello. other day i was like you know is that sunny like sunny be out here box? Like, why you know mary j blige said no nah, i'm gonna do power like what's right. up <laughs> why not man, why can't i do- let the man say oh, i'm an actor now i'm an actor <laughs> Issa ray is the literal definition of if i want to do it yeah. i'm gonna do it and i'm right. gonna find the people who know how to do it and they most likely gonna be in my age range mm-hmm. and look like me and we're gonna do it yeah. and kill it so as you were growing up and pursuing journalism did you ever feel like you had to put that side of you that artistic side on hold for a bit to yeah. you know pursue your Absolutely. education go after like the the corporate job route and all of that well no never a corporate job this is never gonna be me <laughs> well, entertainment job <laughs> it's a child right so i think um when i so when i was in college the best piece of advice my dad gave me was intern you have to intern this gig and this career path is about who you know and who knows you mm-hmm. so when I got my first, after my freshman year, some, the first summer I was interning and I interned every semester after. Okay. I utilized my time and my energy and my resources to make sure that I understood every single part of what I could do and accomplish at that time in entertainment journalism so that I, if I really did want to be a host, I was also a great producer, a great editor, mm-hmm. all the things. So my first internship was under Donnie Simpson um, at WPGC in DC when he was the radio, yes. m- the morning radio show host then. And I was his last summer intern for that chapter of his life. And I just remember he affirmed that I could do entertainment because at that time we lived in very much a uh, 2000s bad boy. You got to kill everybody <laughs> to make it type of grind. Don't sleep. Don't eat. Don't do nothing right. culture. And I was like, why does life have to be so hard? Like right. we're not... <laughs> Why do I have to harm why? people to make it? And I never understood that about entertainment. It, why are we like this? You know? Why is it so deeply harmful? Why do we harmful? put the interns through this? And, and the assistants. Why? Like, why? <laughs> why? And but, so, okay, so what was but Donnie, mm-hmm. he, he is just this bundle of light and joy. Mm-hmm. And if you are a journalist or an entertainment journalist or a broadcast journalist or a vlogger, a video person, you don't know who Donnie Simpson is. You don't know your craft because mm-hmm. Donnie was the original VJ, honey. Yes. The the original smooth, yes. fine, just everything DJ. But he was always so kind. And so what I noticed from him is that every single time he was he came in the studio, that was his world. So mm-hmm. whoever walked in, janitor, the 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 board ops, the producers for the show, to Jill Scott, to the mayor, anybody who walked in felt seen heard, respected, and celebrated, even if it was just a, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Good morning. And when I realized that kindness and integrity could flourish, I was like, oh, I can't do it. 
And mm-hmm. Donnie was the person that made me realize that for sure. My dad, I knew it could work in hard news, but I was like, can it work in entertainment? I don't know. I don't really want to hustle and die. Like I would like to live <laughs> a very beautiful life. And so, um, yeah, so that's what did that. And then I did the Ween Academy, which is the Women Entertainment Empowerment Network, which is founded by Alicia Butterfield Jones and Sabrina Thompson and all these incredibly talented, brilliant women in the field who saw that there was just too many opportunities for black women to consistently be pitted against each other. And Mm. so they created an academy, which was kind of like, I want to work for Diddy meets like America's Next Time Model because we had like challenges every single week. We were being taught by people. It was everything. But me and those 30 girls uh, who were in the class were and still are like very close. I was just out with my ween sister the other night. Uh, my first manager ever was my other ween sister. My other ween sister, we going out New Orleans to, to turn up for her wedding. Like it's like they're still my How close, beautiful. close friends, right? And I, I have Belisha Butterfield Jones, who is one of my mentors on my podcast. More than that, and it was a full circle moment because we talked about the power of mentorship. And so, mm. when I say that it has been a journey that I have been able to incorporate my love of entertainment into while telling stories and being a person that has seen a lot of different black women journeys and also been brought up by a lot of black women and mm-hmm. my dad and black women, like, and, and Ebro Darden and Donnie Simpson and big ticker, like a lot of like black people have really always been there for me and have been the, the catalyst for changes in my career. And I and say this, a lot of great internships with, these yes, people. I did. Yeah. Yes. Like Tigger, I didn't intern for Ebro. I was, I worked for Ebro, but Tigger and Donnie were people I did internships under free was in there at a second. Like it was radio had a lot of change at that time. So mm-hmm. I interned with a lot of people, but I say all that to say, um, at the end of the day, when I did graduate though, wasn't no jobs. We was in the middle of a recession, honey. Went to Rutgers University. I had every internship you could think of. I did yep. Live with Kelly and Michael. I did the first two seasons of Wendy Williams. Honey. I did radio, all the things. I yep. I thought I was that girl. I did NABJ. Nope. No one called. We were still in the midst of a recession. So I did um, go into advertising for a year. Okay. And that was the job that I was like, I will never. <laughs> I don't was care. It, was it one of those billable advertising agency that kind of flow, or was it <laughs> yeah, more? Of it was like, an ad this? agency. They had fourteen accounts. Oh man, it was. It that was, will do it. <laughs> I was on the BMW account. I oversaw the regional spots for commercials for like if you see BMW of a uh, Bowie, Maryland. I was mm-hmm. the person that was making sure that BMW dealerships in Bowie had the ad that was given to yeah, all. Like yep. it was. I used to watch (laughs) T.D. Jakes to get through the day. But you know what? I bet you that somehow has helped you to where you are now, right? Oh, yeah. So I I was going to say my first gig in the industry was I was an overnight desk associate or, uh, yeah, per diem desk associate at Mm -hmm. CBS Radio News. Okay. And that is in a historic place in New York because... That's where damn rather like it's, it's just like incredibly t- the, the the news and the stories they were able to cover there. It's like if you talk to newsies, they're like serious written news. That's incredible. So I was honored to have the job, but I did know that hard news wasn't for me because um, on the first day we were covering the James Holmes shooting trial, mm-hmm. the man who shot up the uh, the movie theater in Colorado, yeah. I believe, uh, the Sandusky trial, Ooh. the man who harmed. All those Penn young State. players yeah. at Penn State. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was one more that I can't quite remember. But there was a lot of darkness that day. And I still went forward because I was like, you know what? I, I got to get a job. It takes a job to get a job. Like right. this woman I had met, her name was Linda Coombs. I love her to this day. Uh, she gave me an opportunity after going to the NABJ Career Fair um, in New Orleans that year. And I knew I didn't love hard news. But I didn't know how desensitized that you ha- you have to be to cover hard news. And I think the last straws for me was one of my really close friends from my college experience, uh, Kristen Learty or KK. She was killed in a drive-by shooting in Boston and was on the way to work. And I like had to pull over and just cry because what in the world? And I get to work and I see the story on the news wire. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Wow. Okay, like this is the we is is deeply real. And then the after I got back from the funeral, I remember being like, life is 
precious and short, what am I afraid of? Like, what am I actually waiting for? And so um, I was still playing around because I was still able, I still had a job, right? I still had a gig. So I was still able to learn a lot in that newsroom. I'm grateful for that experience. I worked uh, overnights, literally from 11 p.m. uh, to 8 a.m. in the morning. I proved my to myself at that point that mm-hmm. I could do anything. I was like, if I can make it through this crazy night, I can do anything. And I did it with Starbucks prayer, lots of Tumblr. <laughs> but I also, I also figured out, I would watch all the late night shows, but I also figured out my plan, my okay. vision for myself, like who I was and wasn't going to be. And so I was like, I want to interview these people. I had already had a media and production company. And my, like, I had time to think because in the hours of like, 2 to 4 a.m., there is no news because everybody really actually is asleep. Yeah. Except for us who are running the newsroom just in case something breaks. So I used to write down quotes to myself that I would see online that were inspiring. I used to write down who I wanted to interview. But Mm -hmm. the biggest thing that I took was I'm a hustler and Mm -hmm. I'm going to make this work. Everybody told me in hard news at that time, you have to move to Idaho and you got to be a, a one man bander and figure that out until you get to New York. And I was like, absolutely not. I'm in New York. I went to Rutgers <laughs> University so I could start in New York. So if I have to figure this out, I'll figure it out. And so mm-hmm. when I left there, that's when I decided to build my my money, get some money, because also in journalism, they don't pay you nothing. Nope. In those nope, first nope. few years, honey, they Listen. give you about seven dollars and you still got to live in New York. Uh, and so um, when I did finally leave, I started freelancing. And honestly, I've been pretty much freelancing ever since. But I started to freelance because I was like, nah, I'm going to take this job in advertising to start to pay some of these Sally Mae bills off and things. But I'm going to still freelance. So down the street from my job was SOBs. And in New York, that is one of the biggest most important first stages that any artist can ever perform on in New York. Like it's an intimate place, but all the legends have hit that stage because if you can't make it through SOBs, yes, you're probably going to make it. Venue guys. It's so cool. It's so hip. And, it's so it dope. There? and it's you can see there, everybody right? it's still there but i don't okay, know what, I know with the, the COVID pandemic, time so many things so many iconic places because it's, yeah. it's intimate it's intimate it's intimate you mm-hmm. can't be you can't if you shut down the door after 20 <laughs> people it's not gonna be the same vibe like yeah. the reason you go to sobs is because it's incredible right. and so i walk in there i had kept my cbs id even though i was supposed to, talk to <laughs> um and i have walked in there and talked to the pr guy and yeah. i said um hey I know you guys have a lot of uh, shows that you guys cover. Um, My editors at CBS Entertainment, this is my badge, um, (laughs) want me to start covering more shows. So I just wanted to come in here uh, and see how I can get on the press list for these things. Girl, (laughs) acting. The acting was real. I was like, and and he looked at me. His name's Andre. (laughs) And he looked at me. And he knew I was bullshit. He excuse my French. He had to know. And yeah. I appreciate him because he saw something in me anyway. It was like the fact that she walked up in here right. with this. I ain't never seen nobody come. Yes. This charade, honey. This charade. <laughs> the, the fact that she walked in here, yeah. I'm going to give her a chance. So he started mm-hmm. to put me on little things. And he was like, look, you reach out to these people. You see if they will take an interview with you because I wasn't writing at CBS. So it was literally me just posting these interviews. And so my first interview there, I had my friend from Rutgers. She had a camera. We went and I interviewed Bridget Kelly. And she was on her first small tour at that time. Yeah. Was on tour with Hove. And that was the first person I interviewed. And now we're wow. friends. So it's funny. But yeah, so I always knew freelancing. What I love about that is like, it just shows like you could be on what some people see as this traditional path. You know, usually we're talking to people on this show who've gone from like side hustle to full-time entrepreneur business or what have you. But when you're a journalist in today's day and age, you are your own business. You are a business of one. You're building a brand, you're building your content. And it's looking a lot different than it did for your dad when he was starting out and and in the throes of his journalism career. So let's talk about when you went from creating that content with SOBs to starting to develop some of your own series like and your own portfolio that would live on a website so you could say, here's my reel. How did that come about? Um, That started it it, it, for me. That's always like a a project. Like when I have openings in my career, that is the project in the first uh, that is how when I 
focus on my own projects. But yeah. that that first interview was my own series. That was mm-hmm. like in conversation with Gia Peppers. That was nice. the first series that I did because I noticed that we were in a time where like the industry of entertainment was trying to figure out how to balance internet and money. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. everything was free. You remember Lime Wire and Bear yes. Shack? I was getting everything for free. We was hard. We mess- we messed up everything for the entertainment industry and the same with the internet and messed up everything for publishing and magazines. So there weren't that many opportunities. And I think our generation, especially in that time, those people who are now 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, they we were the first people to be like, all right, we don't have opportunities. So we had to make them. And it just so happened to be the perfect storm where YouTube was really starting to take off. So you could publish interviews to there. I remember so many bloggers started to just go to red carpets. And so people were just starting to post YouTube interviews. And that's where I started my series. That's why I tell people all the time, if you really are serious about doing what you want to do, you will find a way to do it. There is no reason why you don't have content if you are a content creator. And that means... Me and you, right? Ain't nobody yep. paying us to be here right now. Well, I don't know. I'm sure you get sponsors now, honey, because the side <laughs> hustle is that girl. But ain't nobody paying, paying me to be here right now. Like, at the right, end of the right. day, we create it because we want to have these conversations because exactly. we believe that this is what people need to hear and see. And because we're creating a platform for yourself. Like, what you have done. Like, when I, you know, was researching you and I'm like trying to get down to the bottom like what was her big break like what what exact and i realized like you've done it's so like, much on your own independently and that's a misconception so too right that you don't need right this, like one singular moment some people do have yeah. those mm-hmm. and that's incredible and i think i've been searching for that moment my my entire career like when is gonna be my big break uh, da, 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 da. and there's so many little breaks that still matter And so many little things that come together to create a big thing. I was at the Essence Black Women in Hollywood luncheon like four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And Regina Hall was being honored. And my sister. I was watching that the other day. That took her time. Like on that speech. When I tell you Jennifer Lewis really was yelling from the audience, (laughs) sit down. You're doing too much. It was so funny. But, But she, first of all, I'm so happy Regina Hall is finally hosting the Oscars because she's the funniest person ever and I don't care. Oh, Fight she? me, debate your mother. Yes. She's so funny. And Wait, she's, she's co-hosting it? it with Amy Schumer and Wanda Sykes. Oh, so okay. yeah. everyone tune in. Yes. DC especially. Thank you. She's from DC if you guys didn't know. Yes. Um, and so... <laughs> she makes us know. <laughs> right? Period. Hello, yeah, DC. Right. One thing we want to do is let y'all know we're from the ZMV. Um, and so I say all that to say, she even talked about it and I, it always sits with me because she says... You know, some people like my best friends and I had a love in basketball yep. <laughs> and your life changes and you're out of here. Yeah. I never had that. And she was like, I feel like my career is comparable to what it's like to watch a bathtub fill up. Like you just feel like it's never going to get there. You wait, here goes the next 10 minutes. Like you want to get in the t- You just want to feel warm, but it just yeah. never gets there yeah. until finally at one point it's overflowing. And mm-hmm. she's like, I feel like mine has been a little by little yep. drip by drip. Yep moment to moment career Mm -hmm. where I am grateful to be seen by people who do see me. But I also know that like my tub ain't nowhere near full. Mm. So while I would love that moment and I think that it's, we all have that moment, right? There's going to be something in all of our careers that will be the, the, the flashpoint for, for major things. But now we're at a space where we all have power to create our own platforms. So it's not going to look exactly the same. Like, Issa's flashpoint was insecure, but we loved her and knew her from Aqua Black Girl. Right, right. Quinta's flashpoint is happening right now with Abbott Elementary, Quinta Brunson, right. but we know her and love her from Get exactly. it all from. Ooh, he got money. <laughs> like, like, so when but I'm I'm so grateful because I don't know what my flashpoint's gonna yeah, be. Yeah. I just know that. The people who know me and love me are going to be like, oh, I remember her from The Wizards. Right. She was the in arena host for The yeah. Wizards. That's like, how I'm I love her. I'm glad y'all finally see it, you know? How do you find that balance between devoting to your own content and diving into that and saying, hey, you guys can sponsor this, you know, I'll reach out for brand partners. And, you know, if someone reaches out to you, the Oscars and says, hey, Gia, we want to do, you know, a three year contract with you hosting this, this and that. <laughs> you know, how do you, how do you determine how you'll split your time? 
So I, I learned a long time ago that I have to pay attention to my spirit and how it feels when I'm doing these things. It's, it's, it's really a, a case by case situation because yeah. you do have to pay the bills. So you do have to make sure that you have things that are consistent in your life to, right. to do things that you do want to do. Um, but project to project, I have learned that if I'm not creating content that actually helps people or informs people or inspires people or just makes them spark a different part of their brains or conversations, I really don't enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. And so like my favorite thing about more than that is even though it's a lift, right? Like it's a lift for a 20 minute show. We record and meet all the time. It is not easy. I'm also a co-EP this year, which I fought for because I did a lot of work in season one and I was like, this is executive production. I need my executive production credit. Um, I write on the show. I help book some talent. We have teams that do everything, but at the end of the day, and I don't have the final say on creative or any of that because it's mm-hmm. not, it's, it's more than that with Gia Peppers, right? Yeah, it's not yeah. Gia Peppers more than that. Right, right. that. So like I work, there's like 20, 30 people behind the scenes that I barely get to see because I work with like the five people that, keep the production side of running, but there's editors, there's advertisers, there's people who oversee merch, there's uh, people who bring in our, the sponsors. Um, mm-hmm. And we're on 106 markets in this country and mm-hmm. most of them are black owned. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's like, I don't see everything, but the things that I can see, I do my best to be like, yo, that's, that's got to change. Yeah. Mm. Didn't like it when I said that. Ooh, I think I can get a better guess for that. So you balance it by being honest mm-hmm. about what it is that you want to do, say, and be in this space and in this time. And you do what you can with what you got. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I have said no to things because something better came up, but only if it's life changing, right? Mm-hmm. Like I was supposed to do this hosting event at a small city thing that was cool. It was, it was straight, like, and eh, 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 cool. <laughs> I had done it before. It wasn't a, it wasn't a needle mover in my career. And I got, a opportunity to interview Kobe Bryant. And it happened to be on the same day. Had to cancel. So sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kobe the understandable. You could have even told them like, hey, I got I didn't say nothing. I just Kobe said, hey, Bryant. I won't be making it. <laughs> no, I'm, Thank I'm you so much. Like, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and I'm so grateful because a year and a half later he passed away. Yeah. Like, do what you want to do. I got the best advice from Morgan Debon. Founder Blavity. Yeah. That girl. This weekend at Leading Women Define and in, 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 in uh last week, uh Deborah Lee's conference, Leading Women Define. And she kept she called me out because I have this thing. I like to host a lot of things. I love a live event hosting. <laughs> but I do so much of it that yeah. it does take energy away from what I really want to do. Right. And so she was like, Well, what do you really want to do? And I was like, I want to create content that inspires people to be great. And I don't want people to feel like greatness is only synonymous with Jay-Z, Beyonce, and Oprah. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to realize that they have greatness and I hope that the conversations that I create inspire that. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well then no. Cause I was like, I'll do something at Blavity. And she was like, no, that's not what you really want to do. She was like, do what you want to do. And I was like, dang, wow, drag me. Like, so- It's such a word. Like, you got to do what you want to do. Um, and if things come up, manage it as a human being, right? Don't try to be shysty. Don't try to be shady. Don't try to just not show up. Like, right. it is going to be a relationship that might be sullied. Mm-hmm. But but you have to prioritize what you want to do. Um, and what you want to be in the spaces you want to exactly. be Exactly. Because there's a lot of opportunity out here. So much. I was just about to say, there's so much opportunity. You know, you could be looking at this person like, oh, she's hosting more stuff than me I need to host more and you don't even know what's going on in their head they might be thinking I need to host less but you're trying to chase all these different things that you think you need to be doing when yes like we want to see more of your content come to life we want to see more of your vision come to life because every time you do it it's just amazing right like the stories that you're able to bring out the people that you're able to to speak to and all of that so what's really next for you in terms of bringing ideas to fruition, ideas that are in your brain. And we'll, we'll, we'll touch on this and then we'll jump into the lightning round. Yeah, I think what's next for me is brilliant and bright and deeply important. I don't know exactly what is next for yeah. me because we can go back to the beginning and, you know, really get into, you know, we all know Romans 8 
all things work to, together for the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to his plans and purposes. I'm being divinely led. I have no idea what is exactly next. I don't know what tomorrow will hold, but I know who holds tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So for me, what's next is consistently showing up for who God needs me to be and working on the things that are canceling out me getting to that space, yeah. healing those things, being more mindful of what I want to do, being more mindful of the relationships that I have and building spaces and things that creatives of faith especially feel seen and heard. Yeah. Um, more series, creating and producing more series, um, getting back into acting, taking vocal lessons again so I can learn how to protect my voice because I use it a lot. But also singing is a, a deep love of mine that I've mm. thankfully fallen back in love with, with a project that I am excited to share. Amazon Music launched a uh, their own like radio stations now and kind of how, you know, all the streamers have their own streaming radio stations. Nice. And so I'm hosting the all new R&B rotation. Oh, that's uh, It's nice. launching that's tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll be able to say, hey, Alexa, play R&B rotation and you'll hear me. Hey. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, that's exciting for right. me because- I love music and I love R&B and I forgot how much I loved it because I've just been head down working mm -hmm. when you got to enjoy life too. Mm -hmm. Like I I was listening to Beyonce's Be Alive from the King Richard soundtrack. Okay. On repeat yesterday because if you listen to that song, it's such a testimony to all that black women go through, but especially like B and Serena and Venus, like all that they fought through. And that's true for a lot of us. A lot of us have fought through things that no one will ever know. No one will ever know the prayers that you pray silently. No one will ever know the things that you think. No one will ever know what broke your heart, mm. whether that be from your career, whether yeah. that be from a, a man or a woman or, or, or you know, wh whoever you choose to love, whether that be from family or friends or bosses, we don't know. And we carry so much. But if every day we choose to just try again, we must celebrate that. Like I've learned to take the accomplishment needs addiction away from my daily life and my daily joy. And like the real wake up call for me just happened recently with Chesley Chris, yeah, yeah. Uh, with her suicide, I I was so shaken because this is a woman that I have admired for so long. And every almost every project that I've done, she's been a guest. So oh, she wow. was on Black Coffee with me because she's super close friends with Mark Lamont Hill. Um, she was on Black Girl Beauty with me that I, when I did for VH1. And I saw her, the last time I saw her was at the Met Gala carpet. And we were both waiting. It was like me, her, and like three other reporters. Most of us was black because we was waiting for Rihanna. The carpet <laughs> had closed hours ago. But Rihanna shows up when she wants to show up. And we waited. We were starving. So we were doing the whole, like, girl, it's so good to see you. Oh, my goodness. Like, this is crazy. Where's Ruby? We don't know. D -D -D. We waiting. <laughs> and we were like, yes. Like, okay, let's make sure we have each other's numbers now. We, do mm -hmm. we definitely have to do lunch. So um, when I saw that she was was in so much pain mm -hmm. and I couldn't see it. Yeah. I didn't feel it. I didn't know it. And even her mother, like reading what her mother said, like I had, she, uh, she told me that she was um, depressed, uh, but I didn't know for a long time. Yeah. Um, we don't know what people are going through. No. And so all this accomplishment and us caring about stuff, it the like validation. You, the you go to Chesley's page, baby was over accomplished. Mm -hmm. Like it's accomplishments and that stuff. It, 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 and then it's her, right? And I don't, I'm still processing it. I don't, I'm not a health professional, but all I do know is I immediately was like, none of this matters if I'm yep. not happy. Yep. I don't. So when people ask me what's next, I'm like, girl, I don't care. I right. woke up today. Um, I got to talk to my mama today. Uh, <laughs> what's next is I need to get back in the gym so I can get these pandemic pounds up off me. Like what's next is me like figuring out how to consistently tap into the little daily joys of life. Like, yes. thank you God for breath. Thank yes. you God for the sun. Thank you God for a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Like, forget it. All this stuff really doesn't matter. It doesn't. It like really I'm doesn't. grateful for the work and I'm yeah. grateful because 
our our work, what we do, I was just studying up on Ephesians 2 t- this morning in my morning meditation, uh, for we are God's handiwork. We are placed here to do things for him. But at the end of the day, God places the vision on us and in us so we can stay connected to him to have the strength and the, yeah. the, the energy to execute the vision. But then at the end of the day, give him glory for allowing us to accomplish the vision. But at the end of the day, he's still the center of all of it. Mm. So the less we take away the power of accomplishments and comparison and what everybody else is doing and worry about what am I here to do today and how can I do that in the best ability while caring for myself, caring for the people who love me, caring for the daily small things too so I don't get so caught up in the big things that they take me off what I'm here to do right. is what I'm trying to cultivate right. in my life. I want peace. I want joy. I want happiness. I want That's love. Right. I want love. Yes. I want love. Yes. I want my man. We, we, I have to. Re- <laughs> we're sending. I have to realize. That energy. Yes. Hello. I have yes. to realize it's that coming. like I can't. He's not going to come to my door. So I have to get on the apps. I have to do what I have to do because if I'm not afraid to go for my career, and Taylor Brooks always gives me this advice, she'd be like, "Sis, don't ever be ashamed to go after a dude thinking that like he might play you because you know you are a, a, a public facing figure." Because yeah. I'd be like, I- "I'm." I'm afraid the, the, the screenshots now. Yeah. Because I don't like rejection. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like, how will I know if I don't try and say you something? You gotta try. You gotta try. You know, I hit my husband up on Facebook. He's gonna laugh because I always lie and say he hit. <laughs> but in my defense, I wasn't reaching out to him for that. Okay. So, but, but ooh, listen, it we works. have so many platforms at our disposal these days. Okay. Yes. Your husband might just be on, you know. I received that. Them. I so, received that. I lied. There's one last thing I want to ask you before we go. It's okay. Because I just feel that, you know, we all know that you're open to what comes next and, and you know that, you know, you're you're more fluid and flexible in, in terms of what can come next. But for those who are creatives and who have similar ideas and, and dreams and desires, it can be scary. It can be scary oh, yes, to baby. think, like, how do I make a living doing this? How do I even position myself to get job after job, you know, booked after booked. Like, so what is some parting advice that you can give to folks who have a creative journey and, you know, who want to embark on doing what you're doing, hosting, leading, telling these stories, bringing yeah. stories to life? How can you position yourself to be booked? And then yeah. how can you make a living so you have consistent income <laughs> during slower periods? We bless God for the yes. consistent income. Yes. Because... <laughs> It, I have been there. One of the reasons why I always talk about like people, 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 tr- people troll Ebro because Ebro Darden does like to troll. There is no reason <laughs> other around it. But if I didn't work for Ebro when I did, I wouldn't have stayed in entertainment journalism at all because he would he he was paying me to do things that like that sustained me for. That in in between time, I was the um, managing editor of BlameEbro.com, which is now defunct because he didn't need it anymore. But it was his like personal website where like we would cover news and stories. Mm -hmm. And he saw me on Red Carbon was like a year year or so before and remembered me and was like, yo, you're really dope. I want you to work for me. And I was just like, I don't know what. what, Why? Like, okay, (laughs) you're freaking Ebro Darden. Sure. Like, why not? And um. There will be times when like I, my account would get down to like 200 and I have parents who are very supportive. Like it would never feel like I couldn't do anything, but I do remember feeling like, dang, I can't even pay this bill. I can't even like, you know, I can't go out. Like mm-hmm. I just remember it being feeling heavy and Ebro would slide me like an extra 500 and I don't know if he knew, but like on top of like what I would make, but I don't know if he knew. Yeah. But that those saved me, like literally saved me. So when people try to discount him or say he's old school or whatever, I'm like, dog, he's brilliant mm. because he saved so many of us. And he's the reason why Black Girl Podcasts ever even came together oh, wow. because we were all talking at Hot 97. We all worked at Hot 97 in different, different parts of the digital department. And we were the Black girls. Honey, you know Black girls, we find each other. <laughs> yes. And um, we were just talking one day and he was like, he was Snapchatting us and was like, well, this is what it would look like to have a black girl podcast. Mm. 
Ooh. and a black woman podcast. Mm-hmm. And we were like, well, we're, we were young at the time. We were babies. We were like 23, 24. So we were like, we're not, we still girls. Like we figuring it out. And that's when we decided to start recording Black Girl Pod. Mm-hmm. And I say all that to say like, if you are going to be a part of this creative life, one, understand that what you have is a gift. Um, your visions are not put in your head by accident. And this is not an easy journey. You will fail. You will cry. You will. You might even ask God like I did to take the dream off your heart because it's way too hard. Mm. Like to be completely and totally honest. But if you can figure out a way to silence the noise, to escape whatever the little the little feelings or voice that comes up that says you're not good enough, you can find a way to silence that. And really get to 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 the business of what Oprah always says, finding your highest thing, right? Finding what you're good at and uncovering it because it's there. It's already there. Everything that you have, everything you have is what you need to get to where you want to go. Mm. No one is going to do it for you, though. The work, the hustle is sold separately, honey. Side <laughs> hustle is real. So if you figure out, okay, if you have a nine to five because you also need to sustain yourself, that five to nine, you got to figure out, even if it's just an hour a day, did you give yourself time to brainstorm? Did you bring on a um, virtual assistant to help you at least get from point A to point B over the next three months? Identify your real strengths and your real weaknesses and figure out how you can either work with a peer or your friend or someone who's doing the same thing or hire people that can help you to do it because this journey isn't easy, but it's doable. And the only way that you continue to learn or grow is to just start. Yeah. I interviewed Natasha Rothwell over the pandemic and I loved her. I loved her her conversation because she was just so in it, man, like in it, she's in it. She understood baby has lived so many lives. She was a a high school teacher for musical theater arts at one point. Yes. Like people, baby has lived and she made it and she's making it. And she told me like, yo, people are so afraid to start. How will you know if you're good? (laughs) Start. What's for you will never miss you. Trust every opportunity that mm-hmm. comes your way that feels good. Yep. And then surround yourself with people who are doing the same thing. We live in a space now where niche, the niche culture is real. Mm. You can find a place, a space on Clubhouse, Twitter spaces, Facebook groups, whatever. There TikTok, is a space. Everything. There's a space. TikTok. There's a space. Find your way there. Mm-hmm. Find the groups, her agenda, Colorcom, NABJ. Find the groups that you can really be a part of and start to pour into them because they will pour back into you. And then the last piece of advice is, yo, be good at what you do, <laughs> please. The, the thing about Clubhouse is that it, all of a sudden everybody became an expert after one year. Y'all took one class. Don't play with me. Don't. Sh- How you know this? Yeah. Is a lot of regurgitating happening. <laughs> yes. We hear it on a Tony Robbins uh-huh. episode and we're like, <laughs> and, and the new thing that we all have to realize is, no, baby, if you haven't earned that experience, I don't right. want you to tell me. Right. I need to be able to Google your LinkedIn and it should tell me 10 years ago you worked and did that. And then I'll trust that you was an expert. Right. And then maybe not 10 years, but it's scary. At least two, it's three. scary out there. I mean, the, the scariest for me are like the, um, the TikTok doctors or dermatologists. It's like, wait a second now. Like, no. how, do you, how are you a chemist yeah. now? Like, what did you study? It's scary out here. So right. just be, if you be if you very, are a consumer, yes, be observant. Do your own research before yes. you actually do something that somebody said. Unless it's like don't, I don't know, don't do it. Don't do it. I don't so, even know. But la- do just quick- study your craft. Yes. We're gonna do a quick lightning round. Um, you just answer the very first thing that comes to mind, and then we're gonna wrap up. So, are you ready? Perfect. Yes. All right. Number one, what is a resource that has helped you in your business and your creative life that you can share with the Side Hustle Pro audience? The Bible. Yo, For real. Yes. Hello. The Bible yes. has always helped me. Um, and I think another resource for those who might not believe, which is okay, but I, I say try Jesus. Um, <laughs> downloading scripts um, from the internet, like say that there are, there are ad scripts that are living on the internet. Google like, uh, if you find a commercial that you like, 
say it's the um, Leia's Doritos commercial, I don't know. And um, playing with your voice and inflection to see how you can start reading. That'll help you understand your voice and your and your power to sell a story. Ooh, I like that's a great tip. I've never heard before that. I really mm-hmm. like that. See, this is why I'm glad I'm talking to you. <laughs> yes. Do you work with a voice coach too, or you know? I don't yet, but I oh, need okay. to because my voice. I be losing my voice a lot now that I'm recording oh. like double time, and I'm like, yeah. oh, this is why people take care of it. Got it? Yeah, I've been thinking about that too. Okay, yeah. number two. What about how do you feed your mind? What's the best business book or podcast episode that you've consumed so far this year? The best business podcast that I've consumed so far this year. Business, biz, honestly my own um hey, more than that has ahead. a great <laughs> more than that has a really great episode with nipsey's uh business partner david a gross mm-hmm. who um helped him launch vector 90 and and buy a property to turn things back again to be okay. black in crenshaw and slauson uh, in south la and david gross please y'all follow him he's everything he just talks so beautifully and brilliantly but our conversation changed the game for me mm. Love that. Okay. What is a non-negotiable part of your morning routine? The Bible. Everything about the Bible. Prayer. Uh, <laughs> prayer and meditation. Morning meditation is a non-negotiable. I will run late before yeah. I miss my time to check in with myself because I'm, a, again, a Virgo who overthinks a lot. So mm-hmm. I have to be able to journal at least for five minutes, even yeah. if it's about five minutes. Get that st- whatever I woke up with or whatever is on my heart, just mm-hmm. get it off. Mm -hmm. So I can focus on what I need to do. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. Number four, what's a personal habit that you think has really helped you as a creative and, you know, in your career? I love people. Mm -hmm. I really care about people. I was the girl in high school that like, I would say hi to people all the time in the hallway, even if I had seen them before. And they were like, girl, I just saw you today. I just want to say hi. (laughs) I don't really... Again, especially now, the accomplishments is great. But like, how is your heart doing? Mm. That matters to me. Yeah. Um, and I think at the end of the day, we live in a space now where our hearts have to matter. Yes. So um, if I'm on a set, hello to everybody. If I'm on a day, whatever. It's just people matter to me. And if you're in my presence, I hope that I don't make you feel worse about yourself. I hope that I make you feel better or at least feel some type of joy. Mm. Amen to that. I love that. And then finally, yeah. number five, what is your parting advice for fellow Black women side hustlers who want to be their own boss but are worried about not always having a steady paycheck? Because that's real, because steady paycheck. That's, that's real. It's hard. That's a thing, it's baby. Hard. If you are in the corporate space and you like your two weeks, every two weeks, every 14 days, and it's not bothering you, I would say stay there. Because out here is real life net 45, net 60, net 90. Listen, and then net chased down because I didn't get <laughs> I didn't get the check. So all, sir, ma'am. <laughs> if you value freedom mm-hmm. and you value being able to say, and again, it's freedom mm-hmm. because you don't have a nine to five, you just have a nine to whatever time you end up working and yeah. stop working and, and it's all work, right? But if you value not having to do exactly what somebody says, if you value not having to clock in and do projects that you don't care about, there's a pro and con to each side. So if you are at your desk crying because you hate your job, realize that there are going to be parts about the other side of side hustling that you hate. But the payoff is so worth it. Mm. So just figure out if you, if you are the type of person that, that wants this type of lifestyle, I would even say try it, right? Like, if you work in corporate, you could always get another corporate job, especially if you're a talented black woman, honey. <laughs> we, we will get a job. But have your three months, three to six months saved. And if you're running low on things, girl, ramen noodles still work. You know what I'm saying? We love a good pasta that lasts you the week. Hello? Yes. So TikTok just really... Ramen. Google the TikTok, recipe. It's delicious, baby. actually. <laughs> and do what you got to do to figure it out. If you're a hustler, if you're a person that's going to do something and you are a hustler and, and you're a strategizer, no one's going to be able to stop you. Google everything and understand that if you really want to do it, you'll find a way. And if you don't, you won't. 
And that's that. All right, guys. So, that's Gia, that. where can people connect with you after this episode? Please connect with me at Gia Peppers on all social media. Somebody try to hack my Twitter. Oh, and Lord. I got it. The hackers back. are hacking. The hackers Yo, let me are tell hacking. you something. Put on your two factor because yes. I was playing. I didn't think I was that lit until no, somebody tried factor, to take over yeah. my Twitter. Two factor yourself, please, for everything. Yep. Um, and, and, um, yes, follow me on all things at, at Gia Peppers. Uh, and please make sure you guys listen to season two of More Than That Show. And that's at More Than That Show on all things. And you can find more info about the show, More Than That with Gia Peppers, um, wherever you listen to podcasts. It's available everywhere as well. All right. Thank you so much for being in the guest chair. You guys, I will have links to everything that Gia mentioned. And there you have it. Talk to you next week. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six bullet Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you will receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.